now on some competitiveness issues. Lyft, mm -hmm. local option sales tax, is something that we've been pushing for. Obviously, it would let voters in a local community decide whether or not they want to raise their sales tax by a small mm -hmm. amount in order to build projects in their area. Mm -hmm. Matt Bevan actually just said recently that he's changed his tune on that a little <laughs> bit and said that he would be open to thinking about it now and talking about it because there are some communities that have projects that need mm -hmm. to be built. How do you feel about that issue? Would you be open to that idea as well? Well, Matt Bevan seems to change his tune on many issues. I can't figure out what he's for and what he's against sometimes based on his past statements. Um, but I don't, Jacqueline, I don't think there's anything wrong with giving the voters in a local community the option uh, to finance a project on a temporary basis that they want to. I think that's entirely reasonable. And public-private partnerships mm -hmm. is another issue that we've been sure. pushing for. Obviously, there's some, been some back and forth over the Brent Spence Bridge project, and that's what's really holding it up at this yeah. point. How do you feel about P3, and would you pass that kind of legislation? Yes, I support the P3 legislation. I support the P3 legislation that, that Representative Combs has put forward in the last couple of legislative sessions. I think it's, you know, P3s don't work on every project, but it's an important tool to have in your toolbox in Frankfurt when you're trying to get uh, infrastructure projects done. And so I support that legislation. I would advocate for its passage. Uh, my opponent's been on record saying that he is against P3, legislation, uh, P3 uh, projects and P3 legislation. And look, we've got, a, we've got a big broadband expansion underway in the state right now. And we're doing it through a public-private partnership. The only way to get a company to build out that fiber, particularly in the rural areas where there aren't a lot of customers, is for state government to say, okay, we're your captive customer for 30 years. You get us and county governments and you get higher education institutions and the school systems and we'll agree to a rate, but you build it out over the next 30 years. And that's what we're doing. That's an important public-private partnership. And uh, I think you've got to stand up and support P3s if you want to see projects like that go forward. Now, on the Brent Spence Bridge project, are you for or against tolling that bridge? And how do we get it done if we don't toll? Well, I'm not for tolling it. Uh, you know, I, um, I, think that, I think that northern Kentucky needs to come to a consensus on this issue. If you look at what we did here in, in Louisville the, uh, with our bridges and the bridges that are now under, under construction, there was a lot of federal planning money that came in on the front end. And, uh, and the federal government picked up the initial cost. Now, Indiana and Kentucky had to come along with their road funds and pick up the later costs. And that's what's going to have to happen with, with the project in northern Kentucky. But what I haven't seen in northern Kentucky yet is the federal planning money. And we've got Mitch McConnell on one side of the river, the Senate Majority Leader. You've got John Boehner on the other side of the river, the, the Speaker of the House. Where's the federal planning money to get this project underway? And so Northern Kentucky has not reached a consensus on how they want to finance it. I'm going to keep my ear to the ground. If they want to come up with a financing plan, that's great. But we need to figure out where those two leaders are and getting some federal planning money in here so we can figure out what it's going to cost and how we move forward.